Hey everyone, my name is David Dunbar, or the Theme Park Evangelist. So I was trying to do a uh, vlog earlier on the uh, orientation that I did for Hollywood Studios, but I completely forgot a very important fact, so I'm going to try to speed right through this, especially since my laptop battery is dying, which is very frustrating. So... More or less, um, what the Hollywood Studios orientation is, is a time when they bring you, well, for Hollywood Studios, it's for all new hirees or new transfers to Hollywood Studios. And it gives you the chance to learn about the park, uh, learn about uh, working there, and uh, it also gives you the chance to kind of meet some people that work there in the park. And um, while I was uh, there in the uh, cast member building, which Hollywood Studios and Epcot are the only ones you have to go through the cast member building in order to get to the park. Magic Kingdoms, you um, can access just before you get to the bus that takes you to the Utilidors, and then Animal Kingdoms is off property, as weird as that is. So... I get to Hollywood Studios cast member building and uh, has some coordinators of training that helped us check in, make sure that everybody that was supposed to be there is there. And then they uh, helped us clock in. It was the last time I ever got to use a wall clock for quite some time, which is basically when you press in, you slide your blue Disney ID. And then, of course, you had to wear your name tag, even though you were in business or business casual clothes that day. And you would um, basically just kind of wait around until it was time, which we usually did it early in the morning, so it wasn't too hot, but it was still hot, if that makes any sense. Warners of training are people in a button-down blue Disney shirt that help... Um, with uh, transfers, they also tell people about the park, and they know pretty much I mean, more than a lot of people do about the park, except for management. So these um, guys uh, took us outside, and they uh, got to know each one of us. They uh, asked each person individually who we were, more or less, and uh, what's our favorite Disney character. And then from there, they split us in half. Uh, we still went together into the park. They took us in a different way. And we kind of stood, like, side by side, so to speak, once we got in the park. Uh, the guy with the louder voice, uh, who I uh, knew for quite some time, pretty much the entire time I worked at Disney, I just uh, didn't really see him much after that day. Took my group both times, actually, and he uh, told us a lot of history about the park, and uh, he would um, also uh, tell us like all these different fun facts. Uh, so I think the reason why my last vlog rambled on a little bit because I talked a, a bit about uh, I added in some nonsense here and there that wasn't really not necessary which I think I'll save for the end because I'm just trying to hurry up and get this over and done with just because of the fact that I want to go charge my laptop not to mention I do still need to eat something before I uh, head to work and I also need to pack something to eat later so yeah, and I need to change into my work clothes on top of that. So, yeah, fun times. But, yeah, when if it comes down to it, we um, came into the park, and uh, we're just kind of walking around. So I'll tell you three things that he did tell us. And this time I remembered all three right off the bat of the top of my head because I just recently looked up one of them that I should have remembered that's actually a very important fun fact to know about. So the first one that really uh, caught my attention was I noticed that the uh, ground changed color when we went from the main entrance of Hollywood Studios 
like kind of around that area near the Chinese theater, so to speak, till we got over by Star Tours. And the reason why it goes from red to like a gray color is because you're supposed to go from like a red carpet welcome kind of area to um, a back lot backstage area. So I thought that was really, really cool. I'm obviously not going to tell you any fun facts that are, like, backstage, because that's backstage. That's, you know, for you to find out on your own, go work for Disney, and then you'll find out. It's not something I'm going to go leak all over the internet. If it was, like, a behind-the-scenes of a ride, I don't mind so much, because sometimes I think Disney does that for even a guest. So, that's a different story. But as far as what happens backstage at Disney, stays backstage at Disney, even with the uh, shows. So keep that in mind as well. But anyhow, uh, the second coolest fact that I found out about working at, um, well, I should say my backstage tour of Hollywood Studios was the fact that there's this camera guy. Well, he's not a real camera guy, obviously. He's a statue. And he's near-ish the Chinese theater. And his camera is deliberately pointed at the guests coming in and out. And he's trying to get that pe perfect picture. He's trying to get that perfect frame, so to speak. And he's using the guests to capture that um, picture, so to speak, as well. And then, last and not least, this is the one I was struggling with earlier. I finally did figure out. And that was Audrey Hepburn's he footprints, or handprints, yes, yeah, the handprints, are only located in front of the Chinese Theater at Hollywood Studios, which is an exact replica of the Gromulan one in Hollywood, California. Her handprints are not at Hollywood, California. Why? Because they never invited her, as sad as that is. She never got that invitation, so when they realized their mistake after May 1st, 1989, they tried to fix it and invite her out there, but they were too late, so at that point she said, you know what, my handprints are here at Disney's Hollywood Studios, which was NGM at the time, NGM Studios, and that's where they're going to stay. And as far as I know, Disney is going to protect and preserve all those handprints and footprints that are in front of the great movie ride, which is now the, just the Chinese theater, soon to be Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, as long as the park is around. So that's a really fun thing to know. But more or less, so we just kind of walked around the entire park. Uh, the time the construction on Galaxy's Edge was going on, as well as Toy Story Land. I did get to come back and uh, see Toy Story Land. And they don't do anything special. It was kind of sad when I came back to Hollywood Studios the second time. The Grey Movie ride wasn't there, so I didn't get to ride it like I did the first time. I did see the Muppet Vision 3D for like the gazillion of time, but... You know, it's not the same going to Hollywood Studios and being able to ride the great movie ride. That's what I got to do the first time. And honestly, that was like the coolest thing ever. Being able to ride the great movie ride on the clock. And the sad thing is you couldn't pull out your phone or anything. And it's not like I didn't go back and actually videotape it. And you can find that in one of my earlier YouTube videos as well in my Disney World vlogs playlist. So make sure you check that out but in the end also it was really cool um they did take us into the uh, cafeteria of the park which is backstage and i'm just gonna say this this is probably the coolest cafeteria i've ever been in because it's completely dedicated to the entire history of the park pretty much everything that happened back in the uh, late 80s early 90s so it's very prestige, um, and I really like that about the park. Uh, especially, well, mainly the cafeteria. And I really like the fact that a lot of the stuff that's backstage, and I will say this, 
are all old sound stages. So a lot of the sound stages that they were using back in the day when they used to film are still around. They're just backstage and they're being used as office buildings now. And I thought that was kind of cool. Hollywood Studios is probably one of the only parks that they're using sound stages for um, office buildings and stuff like that. There is actually another a parking garage at Hollywood Studios for just the cast members and they only use it for like cast member overflow in the event that the uh, cast member parking lot is like full to the brim. I don't think they use it as much now that they've expanded the parking lot which has been just over the past few years but I can tell you when I first started working at Hollywood Studios the cast member parking lot was very tiny compared to the guest parking lot, which wasn't that big either. I mean, Hollywood Studios has gone through considerable changes since I first started there. And you'll learn all about it as I uh, do my uh, YouTube video series, which could span over the next several months. So we'll see. I mean, it depends on how quickly I get through this. But, I mean, there's no hurry or anything. I mean, I get busy from time to time, but I'll save that for the end. So the reason why the day seemed a little longer to me than normal is because of the fact that when the orientation was finally done, they had to take us behind Tower of Terror where they had some trailers and we had to do some computer-based training. And I think that was the very first time I ever took my um, alcohol-based training, basically certified me to sell alcohol for Disney. And once you got your license, so to speak, to do this, it was good for the next four months. Don't mind that cat. She does this every time she gets really lonely, and I don't know why, even though she knows I'm over here. So that was one thing I definitely had to do. There was a few other things I think I had to do as well on top of that that day. But once it was all over and done with, that pretty much concluded my uh, orientation. I will definitely say this. The Hollywood Studios orientation was by far my favorite out of all the orientations. The Magic Kingdom actually bored me to tears. And I will admit this now. When we were in the uh, stretching room scene, I was so bored by this point that... I decided to do my usual acting up, and this one mother was like, whoever did that should be ashamed of themselves. I'm not going to tell you what I did, because what I do is really stupid and immature if it comes down to it, especially for a 26-year-old. Well, at the time, I was like 24, but still, even for a 24-year-old, is immature. And, of course, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> It seems like my cheeks are really flush, I guess, because I haven't really had enough to drink today. It's okay. I'm just about to get up shortly and go eat and drink stuff. I'm going to eventually change my clo my regular clothes. It doesn't take me long, usually like five minutes. And yeah, I know it looks like I haven't showered or anything yet. I have, actually. I'm just... Relaxing in my sweats today because of the fact that I don't have to actually work till 4 o'clock today. I don't understand why I'm working 4 to 10 today. I really hope that you guys um, enjoyed uh, that video. I know I sped it up a little bit this time. and I know it kind of ruins it for you guys considering it's not my fault. Well, it's not your fault, I should say. It's my fault that I messed it up the first time. It's not your fault that I messed it up the first time. It's definitely mine by rights. But I believe that my uh, next topic, if I'm not mistaken, should be here somewhere. Ah, oh, here it is. Because I got chapters for this. So today was Chapter 5, Disney's Hollywood Studios Orientation Day. So chapter six, you're gonna really like this one. 
what is it like working at Disney's Hollywood Studios? So in that chapter, I'm going to explain to you guys what it was like for me to drive out to Hollywood Studios and uh, come into work and I'll give you very um, brief ideas of what I saw backstage without giving too much information away. But more so than anything, I want to tell you guys what it was like to walk through the park, the energy of the park, and what the guests were like. I think um, you'll really appreciate that one. And just in general, what is it like to work at Hollywood Studios? And then um, the next chapter after that is um, one of my other favorites, which is Busy Days and Slow Days at Disney's Hollywood Studios, which, which was back in 2017. And I want to like prove to you guys like how a uh, slow day would have been back then when, before all the construction happened versus a busy day and how, you know, the 30,000 attendant capacity park handled it back then, considering a lot of it's changed now. I mean, we're talking a long time ago for um, that park. And the reason why this park has changed so much over time is because of the fact that so much construction has occurred at this park over the past few years that Disney's Hollywood Studios is just not the same. In fact, um, the uh, orientation I attended back then was by far the best one I ever attended. And I really wish all of you would have gotten to attend that same orientation, being able to go into the uh, great movie ride and ride that ride with me and being able to see Hollywood Studios back when it was at least somewhat decent. I wish you guys um, didn't have to see Hollywood Studios anytime after the great movie ride. Basically, Hollywood Studios has gone downhill ever since uh, the great movie ride closed down. I, it's a very sad and unfortunate situation, but, you know, these things happen. Oh, the cat's back. Yeah, you probably have met her before. This is perfect. This is my mom's cat, but she thinks that she's my dad's cat, so I don't get it. And the reason why I'm telling you guys all this information is it's very vital for this video, but not just this video. It's also vital for the next few videos that are going to be just purely on Hollywood Studios. And I want you guys to understand what it was like to work at Hollywood Studios or even be there as a guest during the time the great movie rides still existed versus what it was like to come back, work at Toy Story Land, or just be there as a guest after the great movie ride disappeared from existence. Basically, after the great movie ride disappeared, it wasn't too much longer until Toy Story Land came into existence and everything from Hollywood, sorry, for Hollywood Studios changed after that. And it still blows my mind. It's like, this is not the Hollywood Studios I remember at all. And you're going to see how the great movie ride made such an impact on the park and how the park will never be the same again without the great movie ride. So, otherwise, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. I try to keep the uh, video about the same as my last one and just like really pushing or pressing hard on the fact that the great movie ride basically was like the main icon of the park. In fact, for about 30 years, the uh, Chinese theater has been on every single Hollywood Studios trash can. I don't think they've changed it since then. I'd be surprised if I go back and they've changed it. And I'm going to be like, wait, what? <laughs> and the reason why is because the Great Movie Ride was the very first attraction to open at that park. It was uh, an opening day attraction. To see that ride close down was devastating. And I 
never thought I would ever see what that park looked like without the uh, great movie ride, and I did. And I'll tell you this right now, it was not the same. So looking forward to the uh, next vlog. Really excited about telling you guys um, more about working at Hollywood Studios. I really uh, hope that you guys um, find it just as exciting as um, I did. And until then, I hope that you guys have a, a great day. And as always, always remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Have a great day. Peace out.